You never know when that last hug is until it was the last hug. Grayson was my youngest son. He was 16 years old. It was an ordinary, typical Friday morning in our household. But it ended so tragically. He had hugged me as he was leaving to go to school. Something seemed off. Something seemed different. I felt like I needed to go talk to him. So I drove over to his school. Upon finding his car in the student parking lot, I noticed the driver's side window was shattered. In my confusion, I race up to the car and I see what no one, let alone a parent, should ever see. My son had taken his own life. Suicide is a conversation to have before, not after this happens. How does one even have a conversation with their teenager on such a hard topic? Where do you begin? What does it even look like? Having a normal conversation with a teenager is hard enough, right? The no eye contact, maybe a word or two response at best. Brr, frustrating, right? In my desperate search for relief of my breaking heart, I read every book on grief I could get my hands on. I talked to counselors, therapists. I even became a grief recovery method specialist. As I was fighting for the right words to say to you today, I didn't want to sound like a lecture. Definitely didn't want to sound like that crazy mad woman running around shaking people and saying, wake up. So how does one have this conversation and have a productive one? In my reading all the books that I could get my hands on, talking to the counselors, the therapist, picking their brains to try to figure out on how, why, what makes a difference it all really came down to simply one thing, communication, talking. They shared with me three simple things to get this conversation started. None of us have a lot of time. We are busy people. So number one, just sit face to face, having a conversation. You get three minutes, I get three minutes. Use a timer. It's a no judgment zone. Make it a sacred time, a safe space. What about the kids who are uncomfortable with that face-to-face -face communication? Number two, get a journal. Get a notebook. Write to each other. It's a no judgment zone. You write what you need, I write what I need. Put it away the only you two know about. What about the ones who don't want to talk to their parents or have that face-to-face -face communication, who can't? Number three, nowadays there's an app for everything. I know, I'm pretty sure my husband has all of them. <laughs> there are some excellent, well-rated apps, online resources, websites to get your team to talk to someone. Just this past year, 988 was rolled out nationally. That long 10-digit 1-800 number, the suicide hotline that most of us didn't have memorized or programmed into our phones, is now an easy to remember three-digit number. 988 is manned 24-7 with trained counselors and therapists. We teach our kids about all the dangers in the world. Stranger danger, dude, don't touch that, it's hot. Make sure you look both ways before crossing the street. What we don't think about is teaching about self dangers. Dangers of when anxiety is at an unhealthy level.
to know the difference between sadness and depression, how to deal with the emotions during a conflict or even a breakup. How about knowing the dangers of self-harming, like cutting? That is so easy to hide. But if we know the signs to look for, we can recognize them quickly and get them help quickly. The woulda, shoulda, couldas, and whys will tear you down. They can even kill you, because they almost did me. If I was only there five minutes earlier, he should have known he could talk to me. Why did he do it? Why? Woulda, shoulda, coulda. I live with those in my every waking moment. As a parent, I have to live with the fact that my son made a permanent decision to a temporary problem. No parent, no parent should live with this pain that destroys your soul. For the first three months, I literally focused on the mechanics of breathing. I would literally tell myself out loud, breathe in, breathe out, over and over again. Hindsight's always 2020. I wish I had someone share these three simple things with me as a parent before, not after my son took his own life. My whys will never be answered, but just maybe my story will have you start talking today. Suicide is a preventable death. So go, go have those hard conversations while they're still physically in front of you. Thank you.